Um, frequently when I talk to people about painting at receptions and that sort of thing, I get the response from the people that I'm talking to are, who are not artists um, that they can't even paint a straight line. And uh, um, painting straight lines is a really difficult thing, but, uh, but like most things, there are techniques that make it easier. It, um, if you use the right tools and approach it using good technique, you can have much greater success at, at creating straight lines. And straight lines are, are important. If you have a, the roof of a, of a house in the landscape, the, it really needs to be straight or else it, it's going to look wrong to the, to the viewer. Uh, sometimes a little bit of human error injects some um, humanity into a, a work of art, but other times it just looks like a mistake. Anyway, these are some, some of my brushes. Um, I pulled out brushes that are primarily made specifically for, for painting, not necessarily straight lines, but long, long strokes. So these all borrow from um, I'm, I'm not sure which came first, probably the, the fine art brushes came first, but the, these three brushes right here, these are rather moth-eaten, they've been around for a little while, but these are pinstripe brushes used in the, in the automotive industry, and I, I learned how to pinstripe a while ago. I, I, I'm not a particularly good pinstriper, but, uh, but I learned a lot of technique from learning how to, how to pinstripe, even if it, I wasn't particularly good at it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this. And you can see that it's got a very short handle. It's got kind of a flat spot here, and it's got long sort of dagger-shaped bristles. These are called dagger stripers. Um, these, the, the shape is, has kind of deteriorated because they've been hanging around for a while. The, the, um, the hairs in the, in the brushes are, are um, falling out of the, the, the ferrules. So, uh, these definitely have seen better days, but you can still see there's sort of a dagger shape to them. And uh, um, the, the thing that all of these brushes have in common is that they have relatively long bristles. This one here is kind of your standard flat. And you can see this is a three quarter inch flat and the bristles are about as long as they are, as they are wide. Compare that to this brush here. This is a, a one stroke, this is a half inch, and it's not as wide, but it's, it's quite a bit longer. And all of these brushes are longer than they are wide. This is a one inch, one stroke. This is my favorite wash brush. Um, this is a, a one stroke. This one here is, is not especially, um, the, the bristles are, are not particularly long, but it is still a, a one stroke. The smaller brushes in, in this line, this one here is probably the one that's the, um, the most like a typical one stroke. Um, but the idea with all of these is to hold a lot of paint because the bristles are long and release it um, over, a, over a long stroke. Uh, so these brushes right here, these are sign painters brushes. These are not my watercolor brushes. These are brushes that I use for, for painting with enamels. Um, but they're, they're very much the same except more so. These are kind of exagger exaggerated. They're, they're much longer than they are wide. Um, and they work really well for lettering and, and, um, and painting, um, painting long, fairly wide stripes. These brushes here are called either riggers or liners, and they, they share many of the same attributes. They're, um, they're quite long in comparison to, to their diameter. So this one right here, because that's a 10 aught rigger, and you can see that it's, it's very fine and very long. And by comparison, this is a 10 aught round from the same manufacturer. If you look at the two of those, the, the liner is far longer in comparison to, the, to the, the round. The round is actually a little smaller in diameter than the, than the liner, even though they're both 10 aught. Um, but this is quite a fine liner. Um, and I use it quite a lot. Um, so those are, those are my brushes, and the ones that I use far more than any others are, are these here, and usually it's the smaller ones. 
I, I use this, this brush here. This is, this is an Art Tech, also a very inexpensive brush. It's a squirrel here. Um, I use this for doing washes. Um, and the fact that it's a one stroke is really kind of irrelevant, but the fact, because it's a one stroke, it holds a lot of paint, so it, it makes it a lot easier to, to do washes over broad areas. And when you're doing a big wash, um, it's important to be able to, um, to get paint on a fairly large area fairly quickly so that you can, you can maintain the wetness of, of the wash in order to, to keep it workable. So the, the one stroke aspect of this comes in handy but not for painting straight lines so much. Um, the, these, the flats, this one doesn't count, these, these one stroke flats I don't use very often. I do use them but um, but I use them um, more for um, painting the sides of buildings and that sort of thing and that, rather than details. Um, so they're, they're kind of also wash brushes. They're just used for smaller washes. Um, but the, the liners, the round liners, I use quite a lot for, um, for my detail work and my paintings. So there's another tool that I use quite a lot for, um, for painting straight lines and that's this palette knife. Not your typical palette knife. Here's a, a package of, of cheap plastic palette knives made for, typically for, for oils. Um, and in this, there are these, these two that are kind of spatula-like, but the other three are all offset. And these are, these are typical of of palette knives. They're usually offset like this. Um, this. This one here I bought specifically to use to, to, um, to paint lines and I use it more like a pen than, um, than like a brush. Um, but it's a, it's a very effective tool. But in order for it to work with watercolors you can see that it's that the, the finish on it is really kind of damaged. It originally had a shiny finish like like here, and I've actually purposely scuffed away the shiny finish out here on the end, and I also reshaped it. The reshaping has less to do with with using it for for straight lines than it does to use it as a scraping implement, which I also use it for. But um, for for um, and for that, the the lack of a finish on the side, the lack of a shiny finish, doesn't really matter. But in order to to um, get this to to hold on to watercolors, any kind of water-based paint, um, in order to make it effective to, to, to use it as a, as a paint application tool, that uh, the, the shiny finish that comes on the, on the palette knife has to be uh, scuffed away to, to give it some, some tooth so that it'll, it'll hold on to the, the, um, the water-based paint. So, um, I'm going to demonstrate how I paint a straight line. Let's see. I've got, I've got these scraps of watercolor paper. I'm going to I'm going to draw a straight line on here just to use as a as a guide. Uh, I'm going to wet up some some paint here, create a pool. Okay, so first, I'm going to use a round. I'm going to use a, a fairly large round. This is my number four, I believe. Kind of a medium-sized brush. And I'm going to paint this the way a lot of people might approach painting a straight line. And the way I might in some situations. So, if I wanted to paint up to this line, I might paint with the tip of my brush following that straight line and I can do a reasonably good job. But it's a little bit hard to, to uh, get a truly straight line because I'm painting with 
with my wrist and my, my fingers and um, lots of micro movements and because there are lots of micro movements it kind of accentuates if, I, if I'm having a particularly shaky morning if I've had too much coffee or something it's going to telegraph through my, my hand and my fingers into my brush and it's going to show up in, in the line that I'm trying to paint. Not, not a bad job, but, um, but I, it's only okay because I wasn't paying any attention to the bottom of, of the line. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to draw out a straight line across the top and ignoring the bottom. And, and many times, that's, that's a good thing to do because oftentimes, I, all I really care about is one edge and, and I'm gonna maybe pull some some water along the bottom edge to create a graded wash. So in those situations, what I just did works just fine. But um, if I care about both sides of, of the line, what I just did would not work at all. And um, trying to paint a straight line with the tip of my brush the way that I just did, where both sides of the line need to be parallel and, and straight, it's very, very difficult to do using the techniques that I just did. And uh, that's where a liner or, or my, my palette knife um, really shine, um, or these one stroke uh, flats. So, so let's try this one stroke flat. This is a, uh, this is a three ace. I'm gonna use a slightly smaller brush because I've got a pretty small piece of paper. This is my quarter inch. Um, it's a one stroke flat. This is a pretty, pretty nice brush. It's a Winsor Newton Sable. It's, um, it's, it's not their top of the line, but it's, it's, um, it's right up there. A uh, very nice brush and uh, their top of the line. I, I don't think they even make flats in that. So this is probably, this may well be the best quality flat that you can get from Winsor Newton. Um, so here I'm going to, I'm going to use the technique that I learned for pinstriping, where with with uh, with these dagger stripers, you hold the, the the brush as if it's an extension extension of your hand and draw it back. So um, I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this, except because it's got a long handle, I'm kind of nestling the 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 uh, handle of of my brush in the the cleft between my thumb and my index finger and I've got the, the ferrule and the bristles um, acting like an extension of my fingers and instead of trying to paint with my wrist I'm going to touch down and draw back from my shoulder So I'm moving the brush and my hand and my lower arm all as a unit. And that gives me much more control. That wasn't a particularly straight line, but, um, but it's quite parallel and, um, and it's a fairly long line. It started to, I started to get some dry brush effect on this end, but because it's, it's wet, I could recharge my brush and carefully touch down and extend that line. And I, I could keep going like that, and uh, I've got a little bit of unevenness in the color here, but um, sometimes that adds character to, the, to what you're trying to do. Sometimes you want it to be uniform, and if you want it to be uniform, I can go in, I don't even need to use the same brush, I can use a, let's say this is my number six round, uh, round sable, I can, I can just load that up with, with paint and touch it down in here and because I've got a wet passage, the, the, water, uh, the, the paint flows and stays within the, within the area that was previously wet and, unif and unifies the color. 
Um, so having painted the, the line once, I, I don't necessarily have to try to uh, register that brush with the, the previous stroke. I can instead take advantage of the fact that, that I've got a wet passage there and the, um, and the fact that water will, because of surface tension, it, it will stay within the area that was previously wet and not go to the, to the dry paper unless I break the barrier between the wet and the dry and then all bets are off. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways to, to um, to paint a fairly broad area. If I wanted to paint a fine line, I could use my fine liners and they work quite well. And I use it precisely the same way. Ordinarily, when I, when I load it up with paint, there's a, a dollop of paint that as soon as I touch down, it's gonna, it's gonna create a blot. So, um, so what I usually do is on, on a painting that I'm working on, such as this one right here, I've got some some painter's tape on the border of the, of the paper and I usually touch down on that to release that blob of paint before I go to the, to the area that I'm actually concerned about. Um, so now I've got a little less paint in the brush but I, I, it's a little easier to control so I'm going to use precisely the same technique and draw my, my arm and hand and brush back as a unit and paint out a nice straight line. It's, it got a little dry. Um, I was spending a little too much time talking and, less, and not enough time painting. Um, plus, I, I probably didn't have that much of a blob on it to begin with, but, um, but that's a pretty good, pretty good line. Um, so then, my palette knife. Um, the, the important thing with the, with the palette knife is I need to be able to, to get enough paint on here to be a reservoir, um, to, to behave like the long bristles on these, these one-stroke brushes and the liners. Um, so I need to have a pretty good pool of paint because it's not going to, uh, with these brushes, all I need to do is, is touch it, They'll, it it'll kind of bend and um, I don't have to have as big a pool of paint as I do with this because here, when I dip it in there, It's going to go in as far as the as the pool of paint is, and no farther. Um, so I've I've got a pretty good pool here. Now you can see I've got paint on the both sides of my palette knife. So there's a fair amount of paint there. So now I'm going to use this precisely like I did the the liner and the one stroke. Again, I've got a blob of paint. I'll touch it down there. And now, yep, yeah, I just released it. I'm, I'm drawing the palette knife and my hand and my arm all back from the shoulder. And it, it allows me to draw, to, to paint quite a nice straight line, quite long. It did release a blob there. Um, but uh, fortunately, this is just a demonstration, so it's not the end of the world. Um, if, if, this, if I was working on a painting that, and that happened, what I would have to do is let it dry and then scrub out that blob and maybe reconstruct it if the, if the line needed to continue there. But, uh, but I, I would only need to worry about the, the serpent's head on, on my, my line. I, I w the rest of the line is fine. Um, so let me tell you what you what you can't do very well with with any of these. These are all of these, whether it's a long bristled one stroke flat or a, a rigger or liner or my palette knife. All of these they work really well when you're pulling the long bristles along the line that you're trying to paint. If you if you try to use a, a, a liner like this um, to paint the way that I did the, on the first one. The, the long bristles, they'll hold more paint, so it, you'll be able to paint a longer passage with it, but you'll have far less control because the bristles are, are too long and, and, and uh, soft. And um, So for, for painting like I did on, on this passage right here, following that pencil line, um, I'm better off to use a shorter round brush than I am to use a, a, a long bristled 
brush that's intended for painting long lines. Um, and the same is true if you have curvy lines. If you're trying to paint an S shape or a C shape, um, the, the long bristles on a, on a liner or a one stroke are going to make it very difficult to, to paint that shape successfully. They, they excel at painting straight lines. They're terrible for painting curves. Um, and the, my palette knife is even worse. It, you, can, you can use it to paint very gradual curves. In fact, I'll try to do that here. But, um, but they're not especially good at it unless it's a really gradual curve. And you kind of lose the, the benefit of being able to, to paint from your shoulder. You can to some extent, but because you're painting in a curve, there's a lot more movement going on than just the straight front to back movement that, that works really well um, with the, the swing of your arm from the shoulder. Um, painting any kind of a curve like this, all of a sudden you're bringing your elbow into it and uh, it, it, makes you, you're, it makes it much more difficult to, to control. It's not impossible, but it's, it's definitely a, a, a much bigger challenge. Okay, so there's um, another kind of straight lines that, that we come across sometimes, and that's parallel straight lines. As it happens, I was just painting this morning. I'm, I'm working on this painting here of the Kingfisher and I was painting the, the, the graining on the, on the, the limb that the, the kingfisher is, is perched on. This is a little crude. I need to, to wash out, scrub out a little bit of it, but, um, but you can see I've got some, some nice parallel line passages. And uh, for that, these, um, these brushes excel. These are rakes or grainers. This is a 3 8 inch filbert rake, and what makes it a rake is um, the, the, the gaps between the bristles at the tip of the, of the, the brush. So most of the, the bristle end of the brush is just bristles packed side by side in order to hold a reservoir of paint. But out on the business end, where you're actually in contact with, with your, your painting ground, you have gaps between the bristles. And as long as it's not overly wet, um, those bristles will each paint their own individual line. And uh, the gaps will create um, gaps between the lines, uh, creating a, a parallel line effect. This is probably my favorite. It's a little small, but it, it works really well because it's a, a flat. It, it's square on the end, straight across on the end, as opposed to filbert shaped where it's, it's rounded. This is a quarter inch. It's significantly larger than, than this one here, which uh, makes it a lot easier to, to cover a fairly large area. Um, but again, it's, it's straight across on the, on the tip. So the way this works is you load it up and when you load it up, it acts very much like a regular flat. So if I touch this down, I'm gonna get a single fairly wide line. But if I unload it first on some scrap paper, like my, the, the masking tape on the edge of my, my painting, then I can, using very little pressure, I can draw it back and create multiple parallel lines. It's a little loaded up because I, I used it this morning and I didn't, didn't clean it apparently. Um, so let's try cleaning it and try that one more time. Okay, once again, it's, uh, it's a little overloaded, so I'll get rid of the the blobbiness and this should be multiple parallel lines of a uniform width and it's not and that's because it's still kind of glommed together but um, you know that's that's not bad in some situations that might be uh, um, preferable to, to uh, 
fine parallel lines like this passage here. Anyway, that's, that's kind of a primer on painting straight lines. Um, I hope that this has been useful and uh, the idea with these videos is to kind of give you the building blocks to, to, to use to, um, to make you hopefully a better painter and uh, um, these are skills that I've found to be very valuable in, in my, my painting career of over 50 years and uh, I hope that, um, that you find them of value too and uh, if you do please be sure to like this video and uh, share it with your friends who are interested in watercolor painting and, um, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.